Volvo's latest electric car, it's, you know, it's really quite interesting, very unusual. One thing about it I like, one thing about it I think is just truly wacky, but all in all, it's a pretty damn good electric car. A lot of range, 700 kilometers of range from the flagship model. That's even with two motors and enormous wheels. Imagine the range you get if they actually put, you know, wheels that were made for efficiency on this car, probably about 800 kilometers. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. I want to say a big welcome. Thank you to our YouTube members and Patreons. Thanks, guys. Volvo's new ES90. It's not a sedan. It's not a wagon. It's not an SUV. It's not a hatch. It's, I don't know what it is. To be honest, it's um, kind of a sedan with uh, a hatchback at the back of it. But you would think a vehicle this size, it's quite a big vehicle, would have a big boot space. It does not, though. So kind of unusual here. Volvo is best known for its SUVs, but it's now revealed the ES90. And this is meant to be a rival to the BMW i5 and the Mercedes EQE and the Lucid Air and the Tesla Model S. It's, yeah, it's not going to be cheap. It's five meters long. That's 197 inches long. I think it's a good looking car, but a lot of people think, well, it's fairly polarizing. A lot of people think that it looks great. Some people say it doesn't. They think it looks terrible. Which, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. In terms of trunk space, it's got a fair bit less than its rivals because it's a bit of a, an unusual shape. But I'm going to guess it looks like it's got a, a fair bit of passenger room, back seat. You know, it's the kind of, kind of car maybe you'd have a driver. I'm not sure, potentially. In the back, there is probably going to be heaps of space. And the reason is because there is more than four inches. The wheelbase is more than four inches longer than the BMW. It's a 122.1 inch wheelbase, which is 3.1 meters as in, yeah, it's a really big wheelbase. It also has more range than its rivals. It has 300, and, well, okay, the BMW i5 with the most range has 356 miles of range. That's 573 kilometers. That's EPA. And this model, this Volvo ES90 with its 102 kilowatt hour battery, dual motors, and it gets a pretty damn surprising 435 miles of range, which is 700 kilometers. And as you can see from the cartoonish uh, pictures, I think the cartoonish because the wheels look so big, it looks like there's hardly any rubber. You know, replacing tires like this, you wouldn't want to be, you'd want to be making a lot of money, put it that way, because to replace tires like this, it's probably kind of got about $2,000. It's certainly going to be expensive. And yeah, some people think the wheels look good. I'm not a fan of them, but what do you guys think? Very exclusive event here in Newcastle. Saturday the 15th of March from 3 to 5 p.m. I'll be speaking here with just a couple of other speakers. Very small event. So you can meet me in person. You can actually have a look at my EV as well, the Xpeng G6. Test that out. I'll put a link in the description below to the event. I believe that the tickets will probably sell out very, very quickly. So if you're from Sydney, from Brisbane, from Newcastle, make sure you click on that link as quickly as possible to get in. There's, I think there's only around 30 tickets left at this point in time. I'll put that link in the description and I'll see you there. I am a fan of the fact that this vehicle has an 800 volt architecture though. And also let's get back to the actual range of the car. The shorter range model, the single motor rear wheel drive comes with an 88 kilowatt hour battery. That still gives 404 miles of range, which is 650 kilometers. That's that's all, we're getting up there now, guys, from only an 88 kilowatt hour battery with huge wheels to get 650 kilometers or 404 miles of range shows you that actually batteries are improving. Energy density and efficiency is actually getting better. It has an 800 volt architecture that handles 350 kilowatt charging. Uh, the BMW i5, for example, only does 250 kilowatt charging. And that means you can add 300 kilometers of range that's 186 miles in 10 minutes. Meaning really, if you're gonna go on a long road trip, this would be an ideal car, so long as you can find the right chargers, of course, because in about 15 minutes, you could probably charge it, you know, 400 plus kilometers of range, and I don't think you'd wanna do any more than that. It's got a small frunk, it's got a 22 liter frunk, which is, to be honest, pretty pointless, 22 liters is, is tiny. However, in looking at the frunk, I'm, guys, I'm looking at the front of the car, I think the front of the car looks really, really good. I really like the front of the car. The back, I'm not sure. What do you guys think? Okay, speaking of power, 
the single motor, it has a fair bit of power actually. This, that one motor has 245 kilowatt, which is 328 horsepower. And that version costs quite a bit in the UK. It's around 70,000, that's uh, pounds. It's probably going to come out, I would estimate, at around about 90,000 US dollars. In America, I'm going to guess about 110, 100, maybe 120 thousand dollars here in Australia. However, in terms of performance, that rear-wheel drive model has the ability to do zero to 100 or zero to 62 miles an hour in 6.9 seconds. Not super fast, but fast enough. The all-wheel drive, it can do it in 5.5 seconds. And for an extra 5,000 pounds, you can get the flagship twin motor performance which gives it 671 horsepower, that's 500 kilowatt, and it'll do zero to 100 in four seconds. So the reason these cars are not faster than that is because this is a big car and it's gonna be relatively heavy. I mean, it's more than, you know, just over five meters long. I actually do like it. I just don't like the cartoonish wheels. I think the massive wheels for me are just um, something that don't appeal to me. I know a lot of people like them though. I get that, I understand that. But either way, guys, I think this Volvo is great. If we see these battery packs in uh, other Volvo cars, we're going to see Volvo range improving, Volvo charging speeds improving, and really in general, Volvo styling, it is pretty good. I mean, this is an unusual car, but all in all, for a weird looking car, it does look pretty nice. What do you think? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. This really sucks for Volvo. It really sucks for Geely and it really sucks for customers because I don't think any of those three parties were at fault here. The media is pretending as though this was Volvo, the brand itself, but I think something else has happened here that people just haven't really clued onto. I'm kind of sad to do this story, but I think you need to know this. It's really interesting news, but at the same time, I really like the Volvo brand. This is really hurting them. It's really caused some major damage. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Volvo in China, all right? Volvo, it's not one of the most popular brands in China. I don't know why. Brands like Zika are actually much more popular than Volvo in China. Of course, outside of China, Volvo had its best year ever. Its electric car sales grew by a staggering amount. I think it was 40% last year. Huge growth. That was, of course, predominantly outside of China. This problem is in China. When purchasing a vehicle from a, an automaker, it's particularly a premium brand, you expect good quality, you expect you know the, the components that have brands written on them would be from that brand. For example, if you got Brembo brakes and it said they were Brembo brakes, you'd expect that they would actually be Brembo brakes. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. 